learning as much as we possibly can on practice test day. So here we go. So the first part, and remember on your actual test, they may be mixed up a little bit. They may not be in exactly this order. But on the first part, all we're doing is shading what they tell us to shade. Okay, so what, what does this mean? What am I shading it? They think it is a R and nada. So that means I like raisins, but I don't like saltines. Okay, so where are the people who like raisins but don't like saltines? Aren't they right here? Just that part right there? Yeah. So that's what we shade in. Those are the R's, but not the S's. All right, what does this mean? We like lemons or mangoes, right? So we want to shade in all the people that like lemons or mangoes. Are these all the people that like lemons? Mm -hmm. So they're going to get shaded. Are these all the people that like mangoes? Yes. So they're going to get shaded. So what's going to be shaded in? Everything that's in the circle. Now don't get confused, people. This doesn't say they have to like both, right? This isn't lemons and mangoes. This is lemons or mangoes. All right. Now the next one is almost exactly the same thing, except we're doing numbers instead of shading. <coughs> so what does this notation right here mean? The probability of A is 0.7. So the whole A circle is 0.7. And the whole B circle is 0.3. And what does this mean? And N B is 0.1. So the football is 0.1. So there's point one out here, not included in either circle. All right, so now we're going to answer the question. All right, so what does this say? What's the probability that I like apples or bananas? So here are all the apple people, here are all the banana people, so all together, this symbol means all together is how much? <coughs> 0.9. What does this mean? Not I don't like apples, but I do like bananas. So where am I if I don't like apples, but I do like bananas? 0.2. Yep, I'm right here. So these problems are very, very similar. Use the same notation and everything. 
All right, so then the next one, we have two bags of M&Ms. And the, somebody's gone through and sorted them all out. And now we have the probabilities of all the different colors. So for example, in bag one, the probability of getting a red is 0.2. You understand how the chart's read? All right, so I'm gonna take one from each bag and I want the first one to be yellow and the second one not blue. And I'm gonna use my notation, not blue. So the first one is yellow and the second one is not blue. Okay, so out of bag one, what's the probability I get a yellow? 0.1. And, which means times, right? Now I want a not blue one out of the second bag. What is What would be a not blue one out of the second bag? 0.9. Does everybody understand that if the probability of blue is 0.1, then not blue would be 0.9? Why am I multiplying these two together? Because it's and, it's blue, it's yellow and not blue, right? And we're not gonna just take a wild guess, we're gonna go ahead and type it in our calculator if we're not sure, right? And get the answer. All right, now I need a pink, and an orange. Okay, so what's the probability I'll get a pink one? Point one. And so times an orange one is point one. This is the tricky one though, because why am I not done? Exactly. I have done pink and orange, but as she said, it could be orange and pink, couldn't it? It just says one of each. It doesn't tell me which order I specifically have to do it. Everybody see that? Okay, so now I want orange out of the first bag. That's point one. And pink out of the second bag. That's point one. So that's another point of one. So since it could be this one or that one, I'll add them. So the answer is 0.02. Everybody got that? That's a little tricky. You have to be paying attention. Okay. Now, who can tell me what this frequency table means. What does it mean when we have a three here and a four here? What, what does that mean? Three, four, four, three. That four, means three. there's four threes. These are the data points. These are the numbers in your list. And this is how many there are in the list. So if we were to write out all these numbers, which I am not going to do, but if we were, we'd have four threes, we have five sevens. See what's happening? This is just a kind of a summarized way of writing this big long list of numbers. This tells you how many of each you have. So you have four of these, five of these, four of those, and so on. All right, we want to find the mean. How do we find the mean? We've got to add them all up and divide it by how many we have. Now, when we say we're going to add them all up, we're adding up all of these, right? So how are you going to do that? What, what strategy are you going to use to do that? And I, I can't quite hear you. What'd you say? Okay. Exactly. So the e instead of adding them all up, the, <laughs> it's easier to say, okay, I have four threes, right? And then, oops. And then what else do I have? Five sevens. Five sevens. 
four ten, three eleven, and two fifteen. So I got one hundred and fifty. Did you get one hundred and fifty? Now that's what it is all added up. Now we have to divide by how many we have. Now, where's that going to come from? All frequencies. You say, that's right, it's the frequencies. You said you had four of those, right? And five, and four, and three, and two. So what is all that? 18. So there's 18 numbers in this list. Four of those, five of those, four of those. There's 18, so we'll divide. We get 8.33 repeating as our mean value. Okay. Number five. The probability of John getting a perfect paper is 88% when the test is in the morning. His probability of a perfect paper is 72% in the afternoon. 65% of the tests are in the morning. Find the probability that John will not get a perfect paper. All right, what is going to be your strategy? A tree diagram, yes? And you gotta figure out which goes first. So you're going to pause for a moment and you're going to think, okay, the two kind of events in this problem are what? Morning, morning or afternoon and perfect or not, right? So morning or afternoon, that's one thing that we got to go on. And then perfect or not perfect. Now look at the question. The question is, find the probability that he'll not be perfect. Morning goes first. That's right. <coughs> Whatever the question is, is always the second piece. So the first piece is going to be morning or afternoon. And the probability of a morning test is 0.65, which means the afternoon test is 0.35. Remember, every time you draw, draw one of these, it has to add up to 100. Now, he's going to get perfect or not perfect. Do you understand why that has to be last? I got to be able to go like this, right? That's what I want to know. When is he not perfect? Okay, so in the morning, his perfect is 0.88. So his not would be? 0.12, yep. In the afternoon, he's 0.72, which means he's 0.28. Now we read very carefully. I've already circled them. This one wants to know when he's not perfect. So we're going to follow this branch. So we'll multiply 0.65 times 0.12 and we'll get an answer .078 and then we'll multiply this branch right here and get .098 and then what do we do? Since it could be this branch or this branch, we would add them. So the answer is 0 0.176. All right, is there any question about that? Anybody still wondering about where something came from?
So now we've got another chart. People who are buying or packing their lunch, and they are girls or boys. And somebody did a survey and got these results. All right. Question A. Find the probability that a randomly selected student will pack her lunch. So what am I looking for? Girls, girls who pack, right? Well, girls who pack are 14. <coughs> and now I need the total, which is what? 46. I think it's 46, isn't it? Aren't there 46 people in the survey? Yeah. Is a randomly selected student. So I'm reaching in the box and pulling out one kid. So then I'll reduce that, of course, to 723. Now, a similar survey were conducted at a school with 2,500 students. How many would be expected to buy lunch? Well, let's start with this group. What's the probability or the percent of people who buy lunch in this group? 26 out of 46, which is 13 out of 23. Now that's the probability, which is the same as the percentage of people <laughs> who buy their lunch in this group. Or, was it buy lunch? Yeah, buy their lunch in this group. Now we want to apply that to a school of 2,500. So what are we going to do? We're going to multiply this number times 2,500. That's exactly right, Chuck. And we're going to round it off to the nearest whole number because these are people. So about 1,413 students. Does that make sense to everybody? Set of integer, yeah, integers from one to sixty-two, and we want to be more than fifty-five. Well, then, what's the probability of reaching in, grabbing a number out of this stack, <coughs> and being more than fifty-five? <laughs> but what do we need to figure out? We know the denominator is going to be 62, right? Because yeah. there's 62 of them? So we just need to figure out how many are bigger than 55? 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, seven of them? Right? <coughs> you could also do 62 minus 55. Uh, that doesn't reduce, so that's the answer. Reach in and grab a number. What's the probability it's a perfect square? We got to figure out what the perfect squares are. So let's make a list. What are the perfect squares? That's it, because the next one is too big for our thing, right? So 
So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven again. So that one is also seven over 62. Okay, back there? All right. All right, I ate the following numbers of candy kisses. Find the mean, median, and mode. All right, what's your <coughs> strategy for this one? I just have the big long list of random numbers. What is our strategy? Well, to find the mean, we have to add them all up and divide by however many there are. What about to find the mode and the median? Yeah. So the mean, yeah, the mode is the one that happens the most, and then the median, I really got to have them lined up. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite them in order, starting with the smallest, which is three, and then. One, two, three, four eighths. And then two tens and two twelves. A sixteen and a twenty. Did I get everything? Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, y'all, I'm not here. Now, once you do that, it's pretty easy to see what's the mode. Even. Yeah, the mode's eight. Uh, what's the median? So the median, you can either just start, you know, taking them off from either end, or you can figure that since there's eleven of them. It would be the sixth one. So one, two, three, four, five. So this is the median right here. And then the mean, we said we have to add them all up, right? And divide by, I said the 11, right? Did you get 10.45? Does that make sense to everybody? Everybody okay with that? Alright. Now we got 90 students in the gym, 54 of them were on laps, 46 of them skipped. Three students don't do either. How many only skip? Venn diagram. Sometimes our Venns have two and sometimes they have three. Which is this? This is two. We have running and we have skipping. But Mrs. Ford, there's three people who don't do either. Yes, they don't get a circle. They just get to sit out here, right? And there are 90 kids all together. 54 of them run, and 46 of them skip. <coughs> well, what are, what are you thinking? So we know that there are 87 kids in the shaded, right? I'm going to go ahead and shade that in. The shaded is 87 kids. Would everyone agree with that? Okay. But how many kids are right here? A hundred. There's a hundred kids who voted. But there's only space for 87. Which means what? There's 13 that double voted. Now, if 
a whole running ball with 54, then this has to be 41. Watch my arithmetic. And this, since the whole S ball was 46, this has to be 33. Now to double check myself, what should happen if I add 33, 13, 41, and 3. I better get 90. So now I can answer whatever question they want to know, which is uh, how many only skip? How many only skip? 33. 33 students only skip. This is number 10. There are 41 cars in the lot. Blah, 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 blah. All right, what's going to be our strategy on number 10? This is a Venn diagram, and this one's going to have three circles because we have two doors, hard tops, and automatic transmission, right? Eighteen of them have two doors. Seventeen have a hard top. And 26 have an automatic transmission. We don't put those numbers in our circles, right? Because those numbers represent the entire thing. We can only put numbers in when we know the section. All right. Three of the cars have all three, so that I can put in there. have only two doors, two have only a hard top, and ten have only an automatic transmission, and 41 cars all together. All right, so what do we do? We've done this before lots of times. So we Okay, we're done. We've taken all the information from the problem and put it up here. We still have no idea what these three sections are. So then what do you do? So I start writing equations for each circle because this whole thing, the whole 2D circle, has to add up to 18, right? So 2 plus 3 plus x plus y has to add up to 18. What about the, what's the equation for the hard top ball? 2 plus 3 plus x plus y plus x plus z. x plus z for this one would be 17. And by the way, you can do these equations in any order. I'm trying to always do them the same way for consistency, but it really doesn't make any difference. All right, what's the other one, the automatic transmission one? 3 plus 10 plus y plus z is 26. Please, before you start doing your elimination, clean up your equations so they're a little bit easier to work with. What does this top one really say? X plus Y equals 13? Everybody see that? This is 5. Subtract it over. 
All right, x plus z equals 12. And y plus z equals 13. Start eliminating, right? And you can do that any way you want, or substituting. Eliminating <coughs> or substitution. What we have done in all of our examples is multiply through by a negative and add these two together. So those cancel. We have y minus z, y minus z equal to 1. Does that look familiar? Please tell me it does. And then we still have this equation down here. We've added those two together, but we still have this one. So we'll recopy it over here and now add these. So I got y equals 7. Anybody else get that? Now what do I do? Now that I know y is 7. I can come back over here. And this now is 7. And then once I do that, everything else falls into place. Because the whole circle has to add up to 18, right? Well, now I have 12. So x has got to be 6. But that whole circle has to add up to 17, so now I have 11, so is this also 6? And then as a good double check, this is supposed to add up to 26, so there's 10, 26, it does. <coughs> I can answer the first question right now. The first question says, what's the probability that if I reach in and grab a car, that it will have only an automatic transmission and a hard top? <coughs> so only automatic transmission and hard top would be right here, wouldn't it? Well, yeah, probably because it's reached. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because the three would include a two-door, and I don't want that. I want only the automatic transmission and the hard top. So the probability would be 6 over 41. Remember, it doesn't say how many. It says what's the probability. Now, the last question says, reach in, grab a car. What's the probability it isn't any of these? Well, I haven't figured that out yet, have I? I need to figure out how many people are out here, or how many cars are out here. So I'm going to add up all the numbers in the figure, so every single number. So 26, 27, 28, Is that 36 in there? So if there's 36 of them, then that means there's five out here. And the probability of getting a car that doesn't have any of those features would be 5 over 41. Everybody okay with that? All right, one more problem. You're going to choose five cards from a standard deck. So this is going to be a five-card hand. That's important. You're going to pick five cards. So that means in every one of the problems, you're picking five. Okay. So two, find a probability of two hearts and three clubs. Two hearts and three clubs. What's that look like? 13C2 times 13C3. Now, 
Where did the 13 come from right here? What is this? There's 13 hearts and there's 13 clubs, right? I'm picking two of the hearts and three of the clubs. Now be careful, you're not done yet because this is a probability question. So we have to divide it by 52 C5. <coughs> there are 52 cards. open people this one comes out at least on my calculator it comes out in scientific notation <coughs> how do I know it's in scientific notation it's got the e thing on the end right when it's got the e thing on the end you're in scientific notation so if we are rounding well first of all let's look at the decimal we have to move the decimal one two three four places and if we're rounding off to the nearest 10,000, which is then our regular mode of operation, then the answer would be 0 0.0001. Because I'm rounding off right here. <coughs> Before you start, you just stop for a minute and think about what does that mean? At four, least four diamonds. Four diamonds. Four, 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 four. Jacob, you need to go see the nurse? Okay. What does it mean? Four or five. Four or five. So I could get four diamonds or I could get five diamonds, right? But here's the tricky part. It's not really tricky, it's just easy to overlook. How many cards are in my hand? How many cards? Five. Five. If four of them are diamonds, what does that mean? Just one random card. And one random card, well, one non-diamond, right? Now, if all five are diamonds, I don't have to worry about that. 
Okay, here we go. What does four diamonds and one non-diamond look like? 13 C4, 13 C4 times 39 C1. I heard somebody say it. First of all, it's an and, so we're going to multiply. Where did the 39 come from? 52 minus 13. Yeah, 52 minus 13. There's, there's 13 of every suit. So there's 13 diamonds, but then there's 13 spades, 13 hearts, and 13 clubs. 39 cards that aren't diamonds. And we need one of those. Or... <coughs> 13C5. Please remember to hit equals before you hit divided by. It's always a good idea to do that, but you have to in this problem. Okay, row two, are you guys paying attention there? Are we in practice SB ready to go? Okay. And Allie, we okay? I'm so tired of Allie. Okay, all right. All right, here we are, we're back to shading. You can say to me, oh my gosh, Mrs. Ford, we already did these. You are exactly right. Yeah. And we're doing it again because guess what? On your test, you're going to have to do it. These problems. So here we go. We're going to shade this in. So take a moment right now and shade in what you think it is. Shade in what you think these two things are. Shade it in. Yeah. Volunteer to come up and shade. you are everywhere else. Perfect. Now, what does this one say? You don't like raisins, but you do like strawberries. So I don't like raisins, but 
I do like strawberries, so where am I? Just, the, uh, Just this part right here, right? Everybody who likes strawberries is in this circle, but you can't like raisins, so we have to leave these people out and look at just strawberries. Does anyone have a question about either one of those? All right, so now we've got the one with numbers, the same idea. This is the given. So this is where we start, start filling stuff in. These are the questions we're gonna answer. All right, so where do we start here? Who remembers? What do we look at first? We put the raisin right here because this is the overlap. Right? And then we can figure out that this is 0.3 and this is 0.2 and the outside is 0.2. Now, does anybody have a question about that? Jackson and Tylen, let's stay focused. Does anybody have a question about that? Okay, let's answer the question. What does this say? Who likes bananas but not apples? So the banana but not apple people are right here, aren't they? So what's the answer? Point two. Point two. It's exactly the same. You would shade this in, so you want point two. Now, what does this mean? That means all of them. Nah. That means everybody in the circles, right? Mm -hmm. This right here means everybody in the circles. We like apples, we like bananas. We're somewhere in there. What does that Everyone mean? Everyone outside of the circle. It says you're not in the circles, so point that two. would also be point two. This says you are not in the circles. You do not like apples or bananas. Everybody all right? Okay, now we have our bags of M&Ms again. And we're gonna reach in and grab one from each bag. We want one yellow and one blue. So what do you think about that? What? Point two because the yellow is point two and the blue is point one. So that would be point oh two. Why am I multiplying them? And. and so here's the yellow number and the blue number. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. But what? We're not done. We're not done because it could be blue and yellow, right? It just says one of each, so we don't know who came first, so we have to do both ways. So blue and yellow is also 0.02. Sometimes those are different. And the answer then to the problem is 0.04. Anybody have a question about that?
right, 34 teachers in the room using all these different things. What do you think a strategy might be? Toby, you got an idea? For number four? The answer, the answers are ultimately going to be fractions or decimals. Yep, that's exactly right. So, what will be my strategy? What what am I going to do here? What, what, how am I, what kind of picture am I going to draw? Yeah, I am. And how many circles is it going to have in it, Toby? Um, it's going to have three. Yep, it sure is. Because we have computers, iPads, and pencil and paper. 34 total. And computers is 20. iPads is 19. And pencil and paper is 18. <coughs> Five are only computers. Four are only iPads. Three are only paper. Five use all three. Is everybody good to that point? We do now. <coughs> we got to figure out what these other regions are, right? So we can answer the question. So we'll set up some equations. So the C equation is 5 plus 5 plus x plus y equals 20. Yeah. And the I equation is 4 plus 5 plus x plus z is 19. 3 plus 5 plus y plus z equals 18. Do those equations look all right to everybody for the circles? Mm -hmm. All right, let's clean them up. x plus y equals 10 x plus z equals 10, y plus z equals 10. That's interesting, okay. Doesn't matter, it's all good. So what do I do? Well, you make one of them negative. I'll just multiply two by negative there. So y minus z equals zero. Don't panic, no big deal and y plus z equals 10. Mm, 2y. And 2y equals 10. So y is 5. What does that make x? 5 also? And Z is 5 also? Uh, only computer and iPad would be right here. So 5 out of 34. How many use 9? No idea. Let's see. Are there two out here? Did you already figure that out? So the probability would be 2 out of 34 or 1 17. Yes, and yes. All right, so we'll finish this stuff tomorrow. Are we switching the days around? Yeah, tomorrow we have all your periods. <laughs>